the dashing through pages. Chronicles, Gospels, Prophets, Sages, Leviticus, Laws, the Pauls, find phrases. Turning them corners, your spiritual mazes. Genesis to Revelation, so divine. Flip them scripts, endless grace, you'll find. Songs singing sweet, unbroken lines. Hitting that rhythm, wordplay refined. Anybody in here blessed? Spiritual breakfast, soul food dinners, Isaiah's vision, Ezekiel's figures, walk through the fire, no one limbers, kings and judges, prophets profound, plowing the word, no mythical ground, verse after verse, wisdom's bound, heavenly soundtrack, soul serving sound, anybody in here bless, anybody in here bless, yeah, we don't rest. Anybody in here bless? bless? No shortcuts, all divine routes. Listen to the whispers, no room for doubt. Parables drop stronger than gold faucets. Souls hydrated from divine prophets. Study the book, change perspectives. Carefully crafted, not too subjective. A year to reflect, learning perfect. Patterns of grace that time can't deflect. Old Testament drops deep and so real. Kings and warriors covenant seals. Split that red sea, divine reveal. Commandments written, not made of steel. Bethlehem birth to cross on the hill. Unfolding the navy blessings, cast with skill. Scripture flip, every verse fulfilled. Through the word, every verse, every chapter, nothing unheard. Everybody in here blessed, I'm blessed. Everybody in here blessed, I'm blessed. Yo, yo, online sermons, holy vibes delivered, spreading light, got the sinners reconsidered. Psalm the psalm, man's like a holy DJ, flipping through scripture, repping the Yahweh. Your emotes in the chat, praising the message, flat cap on point, teaching eternal lessons. Everybody in here blessed, I'm blessed. Everybody in here blessed, I'm blessed. Digital pulpit, preaching like a pro. Followers grow as the faith overflow. Keyboard clicks, holy words, they stick. Raining blessings down with a slick rhyme trick. Virtual congregation, united in devotion. One year strong, a spiritual promotion. He's a life coach with divine instructions. Streaming holiness, no room for interruption. Flat cap, change the game. New pastoral fame, virtual shepherd. He's embracing the mainframe. In the comments, affirmatives and amens. With each Goliath, tackled faith extends. Everybody in here blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. Everybody in here blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. Yo, online sermons, holy vibes delivered, spread in light, got the sinners reconsidered. Psalm the psalm, man's like a holy DJ, flipping through scripture, repping the Yahweh. Your emotes in the chat, praising the message, flat cap on point, teaching eternal lessons. Everybody in here blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. Everybody in here blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. Digital pulpit, preaching like a pro. Followers grow as the faith overflow. Keyboard clicks, holy words, they stick. Raining blessings down with a slick rhyme trick. Virtual congregation, united in devotion. One year strong, a spiritual promotion. He's a life coach with divine instructions. Streaming holiness, no room for interruption. Flat cap, change the game, new pastoral fame. Virtual shepherd, he's embracing the mainframe. In the comments, affirmatives and amens. With each Goliath, tackled faith extends. Everybody in here blessed. I'm blessed, I'm blessed. 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 Digital pulpit preaching like a pro. Followers grow as the faith overflow. Keyboard clicks, holy words they stick. Raining blessings down with a slick rhyme trick.
Dude, what are you doing? Man. I got no sound. Oh, I got sound. Too low. Yeah, let me... Wow, why is the mic turned so... My mic was turned way, 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 way low. Don't know why that was, but uh, why was was spazzing out for some some reason. All right, we good. There we go. Maybe. Okay, I think we're all good. You'll let me know if it's not. We good. So. All right. By the way, here's my swag from yesterday. Got Honor's, Honor Studio, and uh, I, I have another box. I have another box for today. I have another box for today. So we will, we will do that later. We will do that later. So, hey, Subdue, how we doing, friend? How we doing today? Uh, I stayed up way late last night so that I could have a meeting <laughs> and, uh, meet and chat. And, um, so uh, I'm a bit behind today and, uh, a bit tired today and, uh, still, still, still a good day. I just want to check my schedule to make sure I know I've got a... Okay, yes, I am all good after this morning. Okay, um, so we are, we are, let's take a look where we are. Will it, po it's been doing this uh, lately where if I wait, by the nope, not going to do that today. Okay. And just a slightly too big. There we go. So, oh, let's look where we are. Look where we are a minute. So we are through Jeremiah 35. That's where we got yesterday, which brings us to October 17. Uh, so that's feeling pretty good. That's feeling pretty good. But now, now we're behind on Colossians, and you can see we will have... Uh, uh, a lot of books, rapid succession here in the New Testament. Where do the slow or the uh, the small book section? Colossians, First Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians, First Timothy. So, by the end of the month, I think First, Second Timothy, Titus, maybe even Philemon, and then we'll get back into a larger book with Hebrews. So. You were up until 11 p.m. last night working on voicing the keynote introductions for NCMS. Dude, that's awesome. That's awesome. I hope, I hope you're having fun with that. Um, I'm getting excited about NCMS. Um, Lady Bell! Welcome in, friend. Welcome in. NCMS. Man, I was just looking at that. How many days is that? I don't know. Is that two weeks? Two weeks away? I don't know. Hey, what? Worship just raided with 24 viewers. What? We got a raid? We got a raid. And ukulele for worship. Love you, friend. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Ike Ben here. Welcome in. Papstio. Good to see you, friend. Banana is a Hannah. Welcome in. And Bernie Baywolf. Coming in. We went to you yesterday. Good to see you. Uh, 
Lady Bell, your son has autism and woke up at 4 a.m. So everyone was up by 5. Oh, yep, I get that. Get that. Not Nick Cage. I don't think I said hi to you. I did in the chat before the stream started. I'm watching you people. I'm rating you people. There we go. There we go. This is all the fault of I'm watching you people. She really wanted to be here and hear God's word. And there's Wyweiss. So he was spazzing out. You missed it. You missed it. Wyweiss was spazzing out uh, just a few moments ago when we started the stream. So, and uh, that's me unboxing a bunch of swag. This this is the swag I got from yesterday. And this is the swag I'll be unboxing in just a short while. So, if you are new here, if you are new here, oh. If you're new here, I am a pastor, have been for uh, 20 plus, 25, who knows, it's so hard to count. Uh, been in ministry this century from last century. So, you know, it all runs together at some point. Uh, I'm no longer serving currently at a local church. You know what I'm just noticing? My, my, I was doing something else. I was zoomed in a bit further than normal. Let me pan out just a wee bit. So, hmm, just slightly off is what I'm noticing there, but that's okay. Uh, I know how to fix that. Sorry. Just looking at, there we go. Nope, that's it. That's all as far as it goes. Okay. Uh, you'll notice I, I get distracted, and if I don't deal with what my distraction is, I usually get more distracted. So that's why I run down rabbit trails uh, as we're reading through the Bible. That's what I am usually doing Monday Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, we read in the Bible. Uh, I also have a bunch of fish. Let me just take you on a short tour of the fishies. Uh, the upper right is Sunrise Sunset Cam there. The lower right is the baby koi that were born in the pond. The pond is in the upper left, and the guppies are in the lower left. Meowing, meowing. Haha, <laughs> very nice. What is that, Papsio? Oh. T fish mo fish moly. Okay, that is an ugly ugly uh thing there. Anyway. Anyway, glad you were all here. Uh, you can see down below, this is our schedule. It's the ugliest fish. It is. Uh, reading through the Bible uh, in a year. And uh, we're doing that on stream. And so sometimes there's a little delay in when things happen. Oh, you want to go back and look? It's um, really, there is not a sunrise yet. I can show you this. This is my mom's house. And uh, it is uh, just reflections off of the lake. And, oh, man, the lake is like glass today. The sunrise will be over here behind the tree. So you can just see a little bit of orange and a little bit of light. So it's not technically sunrise yet. Uh, and then here, let me find my outdoor one. This is my outdoors. And you can see it's still on night mode. The camera is still on night mode. And you can see in the pond there is uh, my underwater cam and uh, the light is on for the underwater cam uh-oh you got a low battery all right yes better take care of that better take care of that I'm trying to think if there's anything else i should say about myself i'm never good at talking about myself i'm not a good self-promoter i'm just not uh, anyway, 
whether you're a Christian, not a Christian. If you're coming over from Ukulele Stream, I know you just like hanging out uh, in community where people love and care for one another. And so I am so glad that you are here. Um, let me go back over here a second, just to show off a second. So this is the one tank you can see. Why was there? is uh, albino placostomus over here that you cannot see is the guppy tank and then there's another koi pond or koi aquarium over here and another one over there so i've got several several more with no cameras and uh, i'm just going to adjust my uh camera one second There we go. There we go. So you can you can see my poster back here. Uh, it, the poster is actually there covering up that there's nothing underneath the aquarium back here that you can see. So that's that's really what that's for. Still dark over here, and we will be for another two hours. I should be getting light within the hour. Uh, that's That's where it should be for me, and then we'll have time change, and it'll really be awful. Uh, on both ends, both ends of uh, too too dark, too early, and then we usually talk about getting up at o dark thirty. I don't know if you hear that phrase often. We get up at o dark thirty around here. Galaxy, if I didn't say hi to you, welcome in. Good good to have you lurking and hanging out. Appreciate you, friend. Okay. There's probably more I could say. Oh, I know what else I wanted to say. We do a thing around here uh, called passing the cap. And uh, we do that because we've been blessed and we want to bless other people as well. So uh, I, I know several people in the region where the Hurricane uh, Helene went through. So this is a friend of Sunshine S Games. Uh a relative, actually, I think a cousin, she said. And uh, let me see if we update this. Uh, if you are so inclined, if you are so able, if you uh, would like to give a donation to assist in recovery, uh, there's plenty of others you can give to as well. Uh, Assassinator Steph is another one. I know that she's have se she has several uh, people who have been uh, fundraising for her. Uh, so here is here is another one. Uh, if you feel so unkind and in, in, in any way, please uh, be in prayer for those still. Uh, their lives are still a mess. Uh, it's still going to be quite a while before things uh, things will not be normal for quite a while uh, before things become manageable. She is not going to be uh, this is I don't know about <coughs> Wesley and Lee uh, uh, details, but uh, Sassinator Steph will not be in her home this year. Uh, it will not be able to be lived in uh, or functional uh, anytime soon. So, uh, Lady Bell, this is daily in both daylight savings time. Alarm goes off at 5. Boys normally sleep in until 7.30. Can you hear that? My... Um, yeah, right there it was. The um, pond uh, aerator, or aquarium aerator, the aerator is making a weird vibrating noise. It's going brr, brr. I don't know if you can hear that or not. It's going to bug me. So if you can't hear it, I'll leave it alone. But it will bug me nonetheless. So. Oh, that's what it was. Okay. Motor skills, we need to talk about weather weapons, i.e. harp. Uh, welcome in, motor skills. I'm, I th feel like I should know what harp is, but I don't. Can't, can't place that. All right. We are starting. We are starting... Um, Colossians today. We're starting Colossians today. You know what? You know what? Let's 
let's just do the unboxing. I was gonna I was gonna wait a little bit, but we had a raid today. We had a raid today. I'll just do the unboxing while all of you are still here. Uh, I'm gonna do the unboxing here. So if I can find where the tape is. Don't run with scissors. Oh, that didn't do it. This is more complicated box than I thought. It's tape on three sides. Anybody's family wrap Christmas presents this way with massive amounts of tape? You spent more money on the tape and the wrapping paper than you did on the gift inside. It is uh, brew pastors. Brew pastor. So uh, I am uh, joining a group called the Brew Pastors. I don't know what this is. We got something else here too. So Brew Pastors, uh, we uh, we meet people. Oh my goodness! Are you kidding me? Oh, I. My brain thought because this that it was a, a tablet. No, it's just it's just a notepad. My brain was like, what? What? Oh, it's got some swag in here, too. Oh, my goodness. It's got coasters. Okay. So there's my little notepad that I can bring with. I I don't know the last time I used an, a notepad, but I like that little pocket. There's this little pocket in here that stuff was in. So I got, I got coasters. If go me God we be do, what? We go. I don't know. I don't know what that's supposed to say. I don't know what that's supposed to say. That's weird. That's weird. And I got. Oh, there we go. Got some stickers and then. A little, a little uh, flyer. Pull up a chair and let's talk because life is hard and no one should have to go it alone. One-on-one, -on -one, in a group, or at an event. We're here for you. How it works. Visit brewpastors.org. Choose a location. Connect with a brew pastor. Tapped out? Let's chat. Whether you're seeking peace amidst the storm of life, searching for life's purpose, or just need a safe place to share your story. Brew pastors are here for you. So, and you do not have to officially be a pastor. You do not have to officially be a pastor. Where's the brews at, though? It's a little early in the morning for me to have the brews out. Uh, <laughs> but I will be uh, at a blessing of the beer on Saturday. So, let me see. What else? Is there anything else in this letter? Or is this just a welcome card? Hospital mode kicked in for a second. <laughs> Red HIPAA. <laughs> I I got gotcha. you. I just welcome aboard. Looking forward to to how God will work through you at North Grove Brewery and beyond. That's Brew Pastor Joe. All right. So there we go. There's more swag. Uh, it's the swag week here, everybody. Uh, what are pastors brewing? Well, you may or may not be a brewer, but uh, you could be brewing coffee and hang out at a coffee shop. You could be brewing beer and hang out at the brewery. Um, I don't make beer, but I do make wine. But uh, I do have, uh, I will hang out at the local brewery. So we'll be blessing the beers 
on on Saturday, and um, it's just another way for me to be in the community and be out there for people to know and see me. So I'll be wearing the swag on Saturday, and uh, we'll see we'll see how that goes. The other thing is, like, I can go like to any brewery and wear that now, and then just instantly have a conversation that'll start my other thought my other thing is so you guys if you're if you're praying type you can pray about this i am the first brew pastor in michigan it started in ohio and it's got some in other other states as well but there is a huge huge brewery scene in west michigan and i know several pastors and so i hope to uh, recruit people, uh, other pastors, and people as well who may want to do this. And, you know, that could lead to more of if, you know, going and speaking to churches on it or stuff like that. I don't know. Like, I still don't know what I'm supposed to be doing work-wise. I got no income of any kind, but I'm volunteering in lots of places. And because I'm volunteering in so many places, it's really difficult to get uh, employment. I have applied places and I'm still waiting to hear back from a church and, uh, churches are slow. So even if I got a job there, January would be uh, a likely start date. Your uncle makes wine and beer. Awesome. All right. Well, I, that's, that's a lot of excitement, I think for today. Uh, got my swag there. Got my swag from yesterday. I won't be wearing that probably on stream. I'm not a hoodie type of guy. Uh, and, uh, it'd be a little bit warm wearing a sweatshirt, but I'll, I'm going to wear that down to the brewery. So that's going to be fun. So anyway, we are in Colossians and I'm trying to remember where Colossi is. Oh, you know what? We don't usually click the maps. Oh, sure. And now it doesn't give me a map. Often it gives uh, it gives maps. I was saying oh, I might actually use their map this time. And no, it's not. It's just telling us references to Ephesus. Because it's not mentioning a place other than Colossi. Here's where they should have a map link. All right. That's weird. Okay. Yeah, zoom out. I want to know where it is. That doesn't seem right. Let's go back. Oh, don't just give me Google map. I want a, a historical map. There we go. Okay, so it's by Laodice Laodicea. That's that's what I could not remember. Here we go. This is the kind of map I wanted. Okay. So, it is, it is uh, potentially next to uh, the places where Paul went on his first journey. So, okay. That's what I wanted to remember, because I'm like, I don't think it was in Greece. It's not. It's not. It's in uh, Turkey. It's in Asia Minor. Okay. I don't remember the occasion of... The letter of Colossians, um, Galatians was, they were bewitched by some false teaching. 
That's that's how Paul phrases it. Who bewitched you? So let's see what we've got in Colossi. From Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God and Timothy, our brother, to the saints, the faithful brothers and sisters in Christ at Colossae. Grace and peace to you from God our Father. So, introductions, we usually just roll right past them. However, Timothy is included in here. Timothy may actually be the one who brought the letter. Often, someone mentioned in the letter might have been the one bringing the letter. Timothy is one who will become prominent in Ephesus later, so he's going to be in the region, and he was traveling with Paul. Uh, grace and peace to you. So, and, and I know that just sounds like a nice greeting, like, um, greetings and salutations. Or, uh, you know, like, they become a thing, but we have to remember, letters are an innovative thing. Letters are not something you get all the time. Letters are expensive. So, if you have not seen someone in any length of time, months, maybe years, and you get a letter from them, it's going to be something of value. And that greeting of grace and peace to you is going to be valuable and important. I know we just rolled right past those, but if you have not heard anything from someone in a while, let me just look at this a minute. Um, yeah, so, it, you know, it has my name there. And then it has the person who sent its name at the bottom. There's a whole form to this. Uh, and then there's the, you know, the, the little bit of a greeting, welcome aboard, you know. And then there is the, the ending, cheers in Christ. Uh, and then there's the, the, the part in between. So they had a whole form of things. But even if it's a form, it's still part of the value of the letter. Now we've got more informal things that we do with uh, texting and Discord messages and things like that where we don't even, we would do away with all of the introduction formalities and we just jump into the conversation. But paper is so valuable, then we need to realize just how valuable the greeting was if they took the time to take up any part of their space to write the greeting. Okay. Uh, we always give thanks to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, since we heard about your faith in Christ Jesus and the love you have for all the saints. Your faith and love have arisen from the hope laid for you in heaven, which you have heard about in the message of truth, the gospel that has come to you. Just as in the entire world this gospel is bearing fruit and growing, so it has also been bearing fruit and growing among you from the first day you heard it and understand the grace of God in truth. You learned the gospel from Epaphras, our dear fellow slave, a faithful minister of Christ on our behalf, who also told us of your love in the Spirit. Okay, so Epaphras is apparently the one who brought the message here, not Paul directly. Paul was in a region nearby, but maybe Epaphras is the one who brought it, and Paul did not directly bring it first. Um, fellow slave denotes association, is normally translated servant. The word does not bear the connotation of a free individual serving another. It is a bond servant. So, not someone who is free serving, but someone who is under obligation uh, and cannot free themselves. But I, I love how this happens uh, when Paul is doing these things uh, and doing these introductions. We give thanks to God when we pray for you how often do you give thanks to god for other people how often are you giving thanks to other god when you think of other people um uh, like when you're when you're doing your prayers for for fellow streamers uh, just think about that for a minute do you do you give praise to god for those fellow streamers 
uh, or or even they don't have to be streamers themselves, just a mod or just someone who is faithfully in the chat. Uh, yeah, I mean, those of you who stream or you've been around Twitch long enough, you know how like it can feel isolated and lonely uh, if you only got one or two people in your chat. But on the other hand, if it's the same two people every time, why aren't you praising God and thanking God that they are here, that they came, that they're faithful, that they believe in you, that they value you? That you like. So Paul is, every time he's praying, thinking of those people in Colossae. He, does this, he mentions this in several of his letters. I praise God. I give thanks to God. Uh, I'm thankful for you whenever I pray about you. Now, I don't know his prayer rituals, his prayer patterns. He talks about always praying, continuously praying um, for the for the believers. But, I mean, does he have a list? Does he, like, go uh, from, you know, like he's going, well, we stopped here, let's pray for them. And then we went here and he prayed for them. And let's go here and pray for them. I mean, I would love to say I pray for everyone on a daily basis. I don't. I wish I had a better pattern of that. I pray for people as I think about them, as they come to mind, uh, as I spend time in prayer. I don't make a list. I'd probably do a good job if I had a few uh, lists made out, but I'm not good with lists for anything in life. Queen, welcome and good morning, everyone. I have a few minutes before you have to leave for college and wanted to stop by to pray for a blessed day for everyone. Oh, I appreciate that, friend. Uh, I'm watching. I appreciate it in person and pray for them in my prayers. Yes. Yeah, and well, the one of the things that I started doing, not if it's in my regular prayer time, but if, if suddenly somebody's name comes to mind and I feel like I need to be praying for them, I DM them. Depending on what platform, where I know them, I DM them and say, just praying for you. Uh, I do that. Uh, the other thing I sometimes do when I get an email list or a Discord list and I read through the prayer, I just say, amen, at the end of reading it. I don't spend extra time just saying all those things again. I just say, God, I'm in agreement with this prayer request. You have heard it. I am agreeing with the person in faith that you will do it. Something along those lines. Uh, you know, it's it's one of those, like, this is one of those debates on, on some level that pastors have with uh, other people in the church of, if we take prayer requests and announce them, do we then have to turn around and mention them all? Like, for instance, if I've got my bulletin and I re pull it out and I read different people and update you on the prayer request, do I then need to pray that prayer when it's time for prayer because we just mentioned it and talked about it can we just know that god heard that already not everyone agrees on that some think you need to now include it in the prayer but you can also say you don't need to but you can choose to so bananas and is just follow oh thank you Electropod, I simply ask people. Oh, you know what? That is a great thing to do. If you are IRL, like I did, I I was in the habit of doing this before COVID. I have not returned to this habit. But if you are out to eat, and just ask your waiter or waitress, say, hey, uh, we're going to pray for our meal. Is there anything I can pray for you about? Just Uh, the other thing that, that I like asking is, uh, hey, what's one thing going great in your life and one thing causing you stress? And then, and then you could follow up with, hey, can I pray about that? So just a couple of uh, thoughts there, IRL, with people if you want to invite them into prayer. So, all right. <laughs> Where was I at? Oh, you learned from Epiphras. Okay. Continuing. See? See, I can't, you know, hearing crackling in your voice just cut out for a few seconds. Mm. 
not sure why that is. I don't see anything on my end that's showing a problem. My bit rates are good. It could be an internet issue, would be my guess. FR Vanks just followed. FR Evan? Is that father or friar? I'm not sure. Thank you for the follow, Evan. CSP? I don't know what that is either. But welcome in. Glad you're here. Thank you for the follow, friend. Okay. Continuing with Paul. For this reason, we also, from the day we heard about you, have not ceased praying for you and asking God to fill you with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding so that you may live worthily of the Lord and please him in all respects, bearing fruit in every good deed, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for the display of all patience and steadfast joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the saints' inheritance in the light. He delivered us from the power of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of the sons he loves in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sin. So if you want a prayer for someone, verses 9 to 12 is a pretty awesome prayer to pray for someone. Uh, Father, I wondered at that. I'm in P. Tony's neck of Twitchwood. CSP are the letters for your religious community. The Paulist Fathers. Thank you for the welcome. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, P. Tony, uh, great guy. Met him at, um, uh, ReachCon. Got to hang out with him a bit and, uh, like hanging out in the stream. So thank you for coming over, Father. I thought that might have been, but it's not one that I see often on Twitch, so... I was not certain of it. And just just to, to make sure, there is... There is nothing that you can believe that's going to be a problem for hanging out here. There is, there is nothing. Whether you believe in Jesus, you don't believe in Jesus. Whether you, we, whether you are atheist, whether you're Muslim, whether you're something else, whether you are Catholic, Baptist, or otherwise. Uh, this is a place where we spend time in God's Word together. We spend time loving one another, uh, sharing with one another, uh, caring for one another, and uh, our relationships with one another are our primary. And so... I just want to say that, uh, you know, just to make sure. Because sometimes in Christian communities, certain groups of people don't always feel welcome. And I just want to make sure that everyone knows you are welcome here. And learning new things. Well, that's, that's the goal, isn't it? Isn't that the goal? To have greater understanding. Because with greater understanding, we can live uh, lives more in tune with the Spirit. Oh, thanks for the love, friend. Thanks for the love. Okay. I love this, this, this section here. I love this section here. This is speaking of Jesus. So we, I really feel like this. He delivered us from the power of darkness. We've shifted over to Jesus. We were, oh, I should back up. Give thanks to the Father has qualified uh, you to share in the saints in the inheritance of light. The light is the kingdom of which we are a part of. Jesus is the light that John has spoken about. Uh, he has delivered us from the power of darkness. So he's using the metaphors of light and darkness here. Uh, transferred us into the kingdom of the sons he loves, in whom we have the redemption, the forgiveness of sins. So light and darkness motifs here. Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. Okay, we often think of firstborn as chronological order. Oh, this is actually going to give us a good footnote here. Uh, the term 
proto proto tokos could refer either to the first in order of time such as a first born child or it could refer to one that is preeminent in rank so the firstborn is either the eldest child in a family or a person of preeminent rank. So David is the firstborn, not by birth order, but by preeminence in the family. Joseph is the firstborn. Uh, there's a couple of ways you can get that. One is he is the most important uh, in the family by virtue of him rescuing the family by being in charge in Egypt. So that's one way to get there. The other way you can get it is the intended first wife, uh, Rachel. He is the first son of the intended first wife. Therefore, he is the firstborn, not chronologically, but from the standpoint of relationship he is. So you can do things that way. The other thing is like uh, you can elevate people to the status. It's not a birthright issue here. So just firstborn is status. It is not uh, chronology or birth order. Uh, and he's firstborn over creation. Is there something there? Oh, this is going to give us the genitive constructive is a genitive of subordination. It is therefore translated over all creation. So he's the firstborn and creation is subject to him. So he is over. So it's a genitive of subjective, which, oh, sorry, a subordinate, subordination. This is where I'm really bad at my Greek is the... Uh, genitives i i stink um when when i was studying greek and we would have to sentence diagram yes i had to sentence diagram in greek uh, and i had to explain if it was an objective genitive or a subjective genitive i could never get it right i would 100 percent get it wrong so then i started thinking Aha, I believe it's subjective, therefore I'm always wrong. That means it's objective, and I would switch it because I would think I was wrong, and then I would get it wrong because I switched it. So I just, like, am totally confused on all of that. And you're probably going, I don't have any idea what any of that is. You do hear it here and there. Is it more of a rumbling, or is it fully a crackle? Because I do have, in the background, a rumble that's like a brrr, brrr. Uh, that I that is my um, air bubbler back there making a vibration. Declensions are hard. Yes, they are. I my Hebrew is much better than my Greek, I, and I enjoy the Hebrew better. Hebrew is just like this. Uh, oh, I want to say whimsical, whimsical language to me. It's a crackle that sounds vaguely digital. Okay, thank you, Crewformity. Uh, welcome in, by the way. Okay, then I'm not sure where that's at. Um, clearly at some point I need to replace this old microphone is, is what I'm hearing. And hopefully, hopefully it, uh, it lasts. It's, uh, just a light crackle sound it can be a loose cable or a bad. Yeah. I think it's one going bad subdue. I think it's a cable going bad. And Ryan Blissett, welcome in, friend. We got a lot of people in here today. You know what? I just have to say this. I am having the most blessed week. I am feeling super blessed. Um, oh, wait, wait. Uh, I missed uh, Yeah, Eichmann here. Genitive is possessive, uh, right? So it would go with whatever the noun is that it's attracted to. Yes, I believe so. Um, but there are different ways that the genitive can act. So, yeah, it goes with the noun. It matches. Yeah. Greek has 85 different case endings to tell you when it's taking place, how it's taking place, who's taking place. It's got, uh, feminine, masculine, and neuter, singular, second, and third person, and then, uh, is it eight different uh, forms of the verb or, or tenses of the verb? Uh, past, present, future, pluperfect, 
uh, uh, I, yeah, I just, I just like it just hurts my brain. It hurts my brain. Uh, Greek is like this pre this language with precision to get so narrow and specific, and 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 then you can still argue about it once you're narrow and specific. Hebrew, on the other hand, is this. I was as I was saying, more whimsical. Like, well, it, it goes in the direction of this, and it's and it's a metaphorical and it's an imagery driven thing, and then you have to intuit what it means after knowing what it means. So there's all this vagueness in it, yet. It's like telling a story. The story has so much more meaning behind it than you could just put in the words. So I could tell you the word freedom and liberty, or I could tell you the story of someone escaping from slavery and being freed. And the story is going to have much more power. Hebrew is that language that uses story to convey a meaning, and Greek is the one that uses these words I like freedom and liberty to describe ideas and concepts. Uh, yeah, I've been here. No name, Psalmist. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, yeah, I've been here. Uh, I took Latin for two years in high school. So while I don't know Greek, I do relate to all the word endings. But it made learning German so much easier after that. Yes, yes. Um. We will be getting into Hebrews probably next month. We should be in Hebrews next month. So we got a few things to get through before then. Okay. So we've got the firstborn over creation. Wow, I took a nice sidetrack on that. This is this is one of the things you can do with Paul at times. And you can do with the Greek is you break break the Greek down on a super super deep level. In fact, I was watching a podcast yesterday uh, that was talking um, about the Roman uh, uh, emperor cult stuff, and it was explaining how we've we've kind of whitewashed it into this monolithic thing, which it was not monolithic. If you were in Rome, there were very precision-based criteria for when an emperor could be uh, put into emperor worship, and it usually was upon death, and it was a vote of the Senate and all these things. But other places around the empire, they didn't, they didn't wait for those things. They did things other ways, and each city would have its own process for how it would do emperor cult worship. Uh, and those things. And they wouldn't worship every emperor. They would choose certain emperors who did certain things to put in the cult of worship for the emperor. Uh, and then it was he was also talking about some words and how we've applied them. And the interesting thing was he was talking about Uengelia, which is good news. And uh, he was challenging some of the things I've been taught about how emperors would send out their Uengelian and... Um, he was, he was saying there's only three references to that, so it's not enough to build a case on, on that whole image and idea. And I'm like, ooh, but we've been using it that way, and I've heard it used that way. So this is one of the things I love about learning is I, I, you can have something that's like, yes, it applies, but we've overapplied it. So we need to back it up, pull back. Yes, it does mean this, but in the technical sir, way we've used it, in the expansive way we've over-exaggerated things, and we need to bring them back. And I'm constantly learning that. I sometimes learn something and I just go, well, this is everywhere. And it's like, no, 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 back it up, back it up, make it smaller. It's not, it's not everywhere. It's not everywhere. Uh, Wade Mock, verses 15 to 22 are formatted to show the chiastic structure of the poem in the margin notes. Dude, that is awesome. Um, well, let's, let's definitely take a look at that. Okay, so, if you don't know chiastic structure, um, you will have, there's a couple of ways you can do it, but the one that is the, is the, the easiest form to really kind of see is A, B, C, D, and then you return to C, B, A. So, everything then from A on A and A that are parallels point to the center. Everything that's B and B are parallels point to the center. C and C are parallels point to the center. And then D in the middle is the point. The emphasis is in the middle there. Um, that's one way to do it. Yes, Luce is great, great illustration there. Um, 
or you can do ABC, ABC. That's another chiastic structure. Uh, you can do it that way. Uh, you can have, and the Old Testament has this a lot. So the fact that Paul is doing this, this is awesome. So let's let's play this out. So if that's 15, then that means the parallel, I'm just going to assume these are verses, um, and through him to reconcile, this is 20, all things to himself by making peace through the blood of his cross, through him whether things on earth or things in heaven. So he's the image of the invisible, and he is reconciling things. 16, for all things in heaven and on earth were created in him. Ah, okay, so it looks more like 16. Well, over creation, heaven on earth, um, created in him. All things that were visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions, whether principalities or power, all things were created through him and for him. Uh, 19, for God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in his son. Okay, I could maybe take 15, 16, and 19, 20 together as one. No name, Psalmist, thank you for the lurk. Um, oh, let me get 17, 18. I guess I was counting too many verses there. Um... He himself is before all things, and all things are held together in him. He is the head of the body, the church, as well as the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he also, so that he himself may become first in all things. Okay. Is that where it's saying the center is 18, or is it saying 17? I'm feeling like it would be here, but I, I might be wrong. This is one of those things where I'm not really good at fully fleshing out the chiasm. Uh, I'm, I'm often in the Old Testament good at going, oh, that idea repeats. There might be a chiasm here. That phrase, that word repeats. Uh, we might have a chiasm. Okay, let's just read it through without trying to look for the chiasm there. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creations. For all things in heaven and earth were created in him. All things, whether visible or invisible, whether thrones or dominions, those are some of the things invisible, whether principalities or power, the things that are invisible, all things were created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and all things are held together in him. He is the head of the body, the church, as well as the be as well as the beginning the firstborn from the dead so that he himself may become first in all things so firstborn from the dead what do we have there firstborn here is a reference to firstborn from the dead okay for god was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in his son and through him to reconcile all things to himself by making peace through the blood of his cross through him, whether things on earth or things in heaven. Yeah, brain smoking. I know, I know. This is so rich. Yeah, there are big words. There are big words here. And there's a bunch of levels here. So we have, he is the image of the invisible God, and he is over all of the uh, invisible things, which would be the spiritual realm, which would be the spiritual realm. He is over that. He is the firstborn of creation. Creation are the visible things. So he is that. He is over all things, and he holds together all things. He is the head of the body, the church, uh, as well as being the firstborn from the dead. So he's not only the firstborn of creation, he's the firstborn of the dead. So that in him, all th uh, uh, sorry, he may be first in all things. Okay, again, we can say firstborn as being the preeminent, the one with the highest status, because if we say he's the firstborn from the dead, we've got resurrections that happen in Scripture prior to this. However, all of those other resurrections, the people would have then died again. So, I like words in general, concepts attached to words, however, can trip me up sometimes. Totally, totally. Here's the part that I get excited about. He, it is through him, he is reconciling all things to himself. 
reconciling all things. To reconcile is to put things back into right standing. So not only is he putting all human relationships back into right standing with him, he is putting creation back into right standing with him. He is putting the created order back into right standing with him. Like whatever realm you want to think about, he is reconciling the world to himself. He has reconciled creation to himself. He's reconciling all people to himself. He is working towards the restoration of all relationships. That is so beautiful. And how is he doing this? By making peace through the blood of his cross, through him, whether things on earth or things in heaven. So, okay. There is... Um, this whole argument and, and thing about whether angels can or can't be saved. Oh, ad starting in 40. That's great. I'll just finish this thought and we should be good to go. Um, can angels be saved? Scripture does not speak about it. And in fact, at times it does not seem that what it says is. Here's one of the places where maybe because it's saying he's reconciling all things to himself whether things on earth or things in heaven. This would be, maybe there's a possibility he could reconcile the fallen angels to himself, because it does say here through his blood, but that is not a teaching that the church has held to. So if you ever hear that, it's usually thought of, no, no, there is no redemption for angels. There's only redemption for people. Anyway, we should be hitting an ad break here, and then we will come back. Wow, we've made it all the way through half of Colossians 1. And now you can see, if you were here earlier, that the sun, the sun has risen over the pond. The sun is still not risen over the lake. So it has the nice glow for a long time before the sunrise actually happens. And uh, let's move on to, uh, okay, here's the, uh, here's the guppies. Well, I'll feed the guppies first today. And we'll take a look at the koi. Makes the fish feel right at home. Watch the fish, they swim along to the rhythm of his song. Black cat pastor shows the way. Man, the camera angle but in this location is so, it's so much brighter. Oh, and uh, if you can't see why this was decorating again, um... SpongeBob's house is knocked over behind the green plant there on the right side. Totally knocked over. Baby Koi very active. Oh yeah, yeah, they just got fed. I have I have slowed down how much I am feeding them. And uh, they are very aggressive when it's feeding time now. Very aggressive. the fish they swim along to the rhythm what I don't understand though is um, flat cap I changed the, way. the uh, water, water come what completely where the uh, guppies are at and yet uh, it must be something in that location it gets enough sunlight that uh, it just puts chloroform still in the water. I mean, it was almost completely clear. Now it's starting again to uh, show uh, that green hue. I don't know if it shows on camera yet or not, but 
Okay. So God is reconciling, or Jesus is reconciling all things to himself. And you are at one time strangers and enemies in your minds as expressed through your evil deeds. But now he has reconciled you by his physical body through death to present you holy without blemish and blameless before him. So, I mean, like, whoo, just get all that. Knocked over fish revolution anarchy against the sponge. <laughs> Mega, that's funny. That is funny. Uh, Why was just likes to knock stuff over? He's a big guy, and he likes to throw his weight around. Um, so the reconciliation process is accomplished through the physical body, through the death. Uh, he was the sacrificial lamb. He is the lamb without blemish. He is the lamb who is blameless, and he has done this on your behalf. So if you had a Passover lamb, those are all of the things that are the mark of the Passover lamb, Jesus being our Passover lamb. If, bum, 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 if indeed you remain in the faith, established and firm, without shifting from the hope of the gospel that you have heard. This gospel has also been preached in all creation under heaven, and I, Paul, have become its servants. Okay, there are a lot of people that um, ask the question about losing faith. Uh Here's one of those passages that deals with that question. If, bum, 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 if indeed you remain in the faith, established and firm without shifting from the hope of the gospel that you have. This makes it sound like not that you can lose your salvation as if someone could take it from you, but you could abandon it. You could leave it. You could be persuaded to no longer stay uh, true to it. So, and, and I really like it, an idea that um, I've heard recently of uh, believing loyalty. Believing loyalty uh, versus uh, faith. Believing loyalty. So, if I have believing loyalty in something, I am not going to waver from that. Uh, if I waver from that, I no longer have believing loyalty. So, um, I'll give an example. I'll give an example. So, uh, I grew up at one school and uh, a, 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 the town next door is where I was a teacher for a while and I coached there. Um, when I coached at the school, I had a hundred percent loyalty to the school I was teaching at and coaching at. It did not matter that I came from the other school. And when we would go and compete against them, I wanted nothing more than my former school to lose. Um, I, I have a niece who was at a third school between the three of them. And I go to root for her, and I just have a hard time rooting for that school. I have no believing loyalty in that school, even though I'll have allegiance to her as an individual. I know this is a silly example, uh, but I, I don't have any swag from that school. I, like, I don't really want any swag from that school. I still, well, I might have some swag, but anyway... It, it's it's that it's that kind of thing. Like I remain true to that. I will not waver in that. So uh, another example from sports would be Cubs fans, when they hadn't won a World Series in a hundred years, um, they had believing loyalty. Cubs fans did not care that they lost. They were Cubs fans, and it was a badge of honor on that level that 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 they were truly fans, thick and through. Uh, through thick and thin, it's that same kind of thing like, hey, um, you don't abandon the faith. If you stand firm, you're being reconciled. You are being washed. You are without blemish. You're being presented. Uh, but there is a part at which you play in it. 
Uh, there's other passages that say, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. There is an active piece of being in faith. You can't have it snatched from you, but you can abandon it. So, yeah, like being a fan. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's it, and I and I I do shy from the 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 fan lo- the fan analogy breaks down because it's more than being a fan. Okay, um, you know, because I'm a fan of something. Um, I'm not going to be willing to die uh, for that. Uh, I'm not. Jesus, I want to be willing to die for, you know, so, so it breaks down. The analogy breaks down at some point, but, you know, when your team loses all the time, are you willing to stay on board, make some sense or not? Are you just on the bandwagon and you're going to jump off and jump on the next bandwagon? You can do that. That would be the same thing as, yeah, it was no longer easy to follow Jesus when I got to college. So I stopped following Jesus when I got to college. That, that's what happens for some people. In that sense, you are just a fan. Okay. Now I rejoice in my suffering for you. So Paul is rejoicing for in his suffering for them. Like, I am the demonstration of holding firm in faith. This is an example for you to know how to do it. And I fill up in my physical body... For the sake of his body, the church. So I do this in, for the sake of his body, the church. What is lacking in the suffering of Christ? I became a servant of the church according to the stewardship from God given to me for you in order to complete the word of God that is the mystery that has been kept hidden from ages and generations but has now been revealed to his saints. So God's mystery of how he was going to bring about redemption has been revealed. God wanted to make known to them the glorious riches of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So the mystery, DJ Courageous, welcome in. The mystery is among the Gentiles. The Gentiles weren't thought to be able to be in, but the mystery is there. What is the mystery? It is Christ in you, and Christ in you is the hope of glory. Uh, Like, the layers of this are so deep and rich. Like, if if you want to talk about just meditating on Scripture, like, the fullness of Christ is such a mystery, and yet it's glorious. We proclaim him by instructing and teaching all people with all wisdom so that we may present every person mature in Christ. Woo! There's a sentence. We proclaim him by instructing and teaching all people with all wisdom so that we may present every person mature in Christ. The goal of studying scripture is to become mature in Christ. You don't become mature in Christ just by knowledge. You become mature in Christ by your actions. Toward this goal, I also labor struggling according to his power that powerfully works in me. So I'm str- I too am also struggling towards the goal. I also labor towards this. I am in prison because of this. For I wanted you to know how great a struggle I have for you and for those in Laodicea, which is which should be nearby, and for those who have not met me face to face. Okay, so he apparently has met some of those in Ces- Colossae. I want to say Caesarea. Uh, in Colossae, uh, they are in the region of Laodicea. He's met some face to face, but there are more. Uh, Lucis, yep, college is a testing ground for many Christians because there are many different concepts out there. Christians have to be firmly planted. Yes, the other thing I think is we too often um, make Jesus out to be a straw man uh, and, the, and the Bible to be something easily to be attacked. And I say that because the standpoint of if we don't let people question their faith, if we make it out to... Uh, and and I don't mean this phrase to be disrespectful, because I understand where people are saying it from. But when you go, the Bible says it, I believe it, that settles it. That's not a way to live your faith. Uh, that 
you if if you don't understand it, say you don't understand it. Uh, if if you can't explain it, you can't explain it. Okay, don't don't just hold to this premise that the Bible says that it must be true. And I understand that what I'm saying there. The Bible does says it, say it, and it is true. But I don't believe it simply because it's in the Bible. I believe it because it is conveying the word of God. And then I need to understand what it says. Just because the Bible says it doesn't mean I understand what it means or what it's saying. Uh, take the take uh, parables, for instance. Parables are designed to be hidden stories. Take apocalypse. It's designed to be hidden stories. It's not designed always to be clear. Jesus says, I, I speak in parables so that I'm not clear. Yep, he says that. So, um... We need to allow our kids especially to wrestle with Scripture, wrestle with their faith, uh, allow for them to question things, and uh, then they are more likely to not have everything fall apart because of one professor who challenges one thing, and then everything was this whole house of cards and it all collapses. Oh, Johnny Dreams, welcome in. 1 Peter 3.15, but in your hearts regard Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for the reason for the hope you have. Yes, one of my favorite verses, the reason for the hope you have. So, um, my goal is this, that their hearts having been knit together in love, may be encouraged, and that they may have all the riches that assurance brings in their understanding of the knowledge of the mystery of God, namely Christ, in whom are hidden all treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So his goal is that their hearts may be knit together in love, that you may be encouraged, and that you have the riches of assurance that are, that are brought under the knowledge of the mystery of God, namely Christ. So, I, I, I hope, I hope that by hanging out here in stream and in Discord and in other communities, uh, in in uh, Twitch, that your hearts are knit together with other believers. I be, I hope that they are knit together with IRL believers. I hope they are knit together in other communities. And as we are knit together in love, and we are encouraging one another, we see the riches. Of, of who it is. And that's what Paul is saying here. He, he wants them to be knit together in love, knowing they're not isolated and alone. Uh, Donnie, I should be asleep. Uh, I had the idea for a short video, and I had to get it done. Ah, uh, well, sometimes even just taking and writing what the idea is is what you need to do. Come for the reading, stay for the preaching. <laughs> I, I don't get into preaching too often. I just... Try to explain things, but yeah, sometimes I do. I do preach a bit. And and see here, mystery. If we don't allow kids, if we don't allow kids to understand there is mystery that we don't understand, then when they find something that, that people poke holes at that they can't understand, it puts holes in their faith. Nope. Nope, I'm good. I got I got I got mystery all over the place. I got mystery all over the place. There we go. That's a great emote. The sharing of the heart together. Great one, Omega. Okay. I say this so that no one will deceive you with arguments that sound reasonable. Yeah, this is what happens when you get out in the world sometimes. They have arguments that sound reasonable. Uh, for though I am absent from you in body, I am present with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your morale and your firmness of your faith in Christ. You're almost done, Donnie? Well, good on you, man. So, I'm with you in spirit. When I'm not with you, I'm with you. Like, we are knit together, so my presence, like, and one way you would hear that is like, oh, what would Paul say? What would Paul do? And what would Paul think about this? We're knit together. Or even though that we are praying for one another, we're knit together. There's a lot of ways we could think through that. And he's warning against arguments that sound reasonable. Let me just see what the footnote says on the reasonable. 
Paul's point is even though arguments seem to make sense, sound reasonable, they are in the end false. Paul is not here arguing against the study of philosophy or serious thinking per se, but arguing against the uncritical adoption of philosophies that is at odd with the proper view of Christ. Yeah, so I'll tell you where we have some of these things that have crept in over time is people who have beliefs that, um, and we say things, and I don't know if we always believe them, but we say them, of God needed another angel in heaven. Nope. Eh, false. Wrong. Sounds reasonable. Totally false. People do not become angels. People do not become angels. If people became angels, there would be no need for a resurrected body. There is a resurrection of the dead. If people became angels, there would be no resurrection of the dead. So that is just blatantly false. But it sounds reasonable, and we need to stop it. Uh, Omega, that's a good observation for raising children. Letting them know that we're also still learning and trying to fight, understand things in Scripture. Yeah. Yeah, when we just shut down and say, um, the Bible says so, it's the same thing as when you as a parent say, because I said so. They may do it because of threat. They may do it because of fear. And when they leave your house, you have no relationship with them. What I think, oh, this is so good. This is so good. What I think is, if you want to raise your kids, you want to have a relationship with them when they're adults. So you are building the relationship with them through the course of their lives when you have distinct authority over them, but you are not lording it over them. You are helping them to develop and building a relationship that will endure. Scripture should be the same thing. You want to build a relationship with Jesus through his words. You want to be in the word of God, building a relationship with it. It's not a rule book. It is a place to find relationship. Hope that makes sense. Hope that makes sense. Therefore, therefore, in light of the mystery, in light of the fact that we need to hold to the faith and not be carried away, not be persuaded away, not follow after something false. Therefore, just as you receive Jesus Christ as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, firm in your faith, just as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. Okay, so you're built up in him, firm in your faith, as you were taught, overflowing in thankfulness. Be careful not to allow anyone to captivate you through an empty, deceitful philosophy that is according to human traditions and elemental spirits of the world and not according to Christ. So he's warning against people being persuaded to do and follow something different. For in him all the fullness of deity lives in bodily form, and you have been filled in him who is the head over every ruler and authority. In him you also were circumcised. Not, however, were the circumcision performed by human hands, but by the removal or sorry, but by the removal of the fleshly body that is through circumcision done by Christ. So rather than just a physical circumcision, you had a removal of the fleshly body. That was your circumcision. Ooh, I don't remember this 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 view of it. I've, I remember the circumcision of heart, but not circumcision that's a removal of your fleshly body. Having been buried with him in baptism, you also have been raised with him through your faith in the power of God who raises him from the dead. And even though you were dead in your transgressions and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, he nevertheless made you alive with him, having forgiven all your transgressions. Okay, we got a bunch of metaphors that Paul is overlapping one on another here. So we've got the fleshly body removal. We've got the circumcision done by Christ. We've got the burial and baptism. We've got the raise through the power of the dead. All of those, he's overlapping all of those things 
trying to flesh out uh, flesh out fully what we have in Christ Jesus. We have the removal of our former way of life. We have the forgiveness of all the things we've done wrong. And we have right standing. We are no longer dead in sin, but alive in Christ. Woo! Um, continuing. He has destroyed what was against us. A certificate of indebtedness expressed in degrees opposed to us. He has taken it away by nailing it to the cross, disarming the rulers and authorities. He has made a public disgrace of them, triumphing over them by the cross. So he's going back to the powers, the principalities. He triumphed over them. He made it a public disgrace of them. He disarmed them. How? He was nailed to the cross. That was our certificate of indebtedness. It was on him. Like Paul is over, like, if you like to talk about what, uh, Christology is, and Christology is the study of Christ, okay? Uh, and then you've got soteriology, which is the, the work of salvation. Paul is overlapping them here, okay? So when we, I'm, I'm not, okay, I, I would call myself a bibliologist, which means I want to study the Bible. I'm not inclined to study all of the different aspects of theology in their own camp alone. Okay, because what we have right here in Paul is overlapping of different types of works of salvation, of Christology, of soteriology in this one thing. We have Christus Victor language. We have, um, oh, what is it, uh, substitutionary atonement language. We have the um, substitutionary atonement language. We have Paul overlapping these metaphors on top of each other. Why? Because we can't fully express what Christ did for us. And these are paled visions or glimpses of what he's done. Now, we could go flesh all of these ideas out separately, which that's what all those studies do. They flesh them out all separately, and they hold into those. I hold that all of them are true in some way, and they hold value in some way for people who view that and need to see, ah, he took my place. Ah, he paid my debt. Ah, it's like so he talked about the certificate of indebtedness. He talked about being substitution. He talked about paying the penalty. Like all of those things. He talked about overruling the powers that are against me. Like, like all those things are in there. They're all true. They're all true. In some way, in some capacity, they they all are represented in scripture. Therefore, because of what Christ has done, therefore, do not let anyone judge you with respect to food or drink or in the matter of a feast, new moon or Sabbath days. These are only the shadows of the things to come, but the reality is Christ. Let no one who delights in false humility and the worship of angels pass judgment on you. Worship of angels? I don't know where he's pulling that in from. Must be something that was going on there. But let no one judge you. Pull this back out if you weren't here. Brew pastors. Is, is that coffee? Sure, I can drink coffee. Wait, it's got caffeine. People might judge me for taking a substance into my body. Yes, people do that. Uh, or... Could it be beer? Oh, wait, someone might judge me for taking that into my body. Or wait, I have tea. I don't know too many people judging about drinking tea, but again, it has caffeine. And am I, am I dependent upon this because I drink so much of it? It's a good question. It's a good question. And when I'm on vacation, I don't have it. And I don't feel any side effects for not having it. So, or I should say, I don't have it in the quantities I have. I might have a cup. And that's about all I have. But no, I don't feel dependent. I don't feel uh, tied to it. Therefore, I don't feel any judgment over it. But if I go to have a beer or a wine or something else, Paul says, do not let others judge you in regard to food and drink. Um, 
or in regard to a feast or a new moon or Sabbath. There are some making claims that in order to be spiritual, you have to do all of these listed things. Uh, if you want to be a super Christian, you would do these things. You would not do those things. Uh, Paul is saying, that's not how we do this. And don't let others do that. They're persuading you back to the futility of things, of, of living up to the law. Might be one way of saying it. Um, and we do this still today. We do this still today in many places where what we teach and we teach our children is sin management strategies. We try to teach our children sin management strategies. Um, and some others, and I'm not opposed to, to, to strategies, okay? Don't, don't hear me say that. And I'm not opposed to AA or other self-help groups. I think those, those do a fantastic job to help people. Uh, but most of what that is is sin management. It's sin management. Like, uh, if I never take alcohol, I can never get drunk. Therefore, I will never take alcohol because I'm a drunk. Um, and I'm not saying that's bad. But what you're doing is sin management then. You're doing a sin management then. Instead of seeking to change your heart and mind, but which should happen through renewing of your mind through Christ. Now, I'm not saying you don't struggle with sin and, then, and that certain things aren't tempting for you. But um, I'll, I'll, I'll hit another topic I don't talk about very often. What is, is going to, what is very prominent today, uh, and, and that would be pornography. So I can get things on my computer that will uh, block out any suspect things that I might accidentally go to. Now, that's a good thing to do. That's a good thing to do. However, if I'm relying on that alone to keep me protected, uh, or... Or if I get accountability software that will report myself to anyone else. You know what? I'm relying on that instead of trying to change my heart and mind. And, and no amount of it's going to keep me from it if my heart and mind are still on those things. Is it going to keep me from it? Uh, I'll give you another example of that. I'll give you another example of that. Emmett Smith said this. Emmett Smith said this. And I'm not an Emmett Smith fan. So uh, he said, when I go out there, I don't think about don't fumble the ball, don't fumble the ball, don't fumble the ball, don't fumble the ball. I think about hold on to the ball, hold on to the ball, hold on to the ball. Okay. By that, what I mean is if I have a problem with something, pornography, drinking, smoking, whatever it may be, I don't focus on, I hope I don't have a drink today. I hope I don't have a drink today. I hope I don't smoke today. I hope I don't get tempted today. Instead, I think on those things, and I can't remember where the passage is, uh, lovely, uh, beautiful, all those things that Paul lists in other places, of dwell on those things, think of those things. I need to substitute some other thing in place of the thing that, and, and, and it's a totally different approach to things, I think. Yeah, preaching for real today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Emmett Smith was a running back in the NFL who was paid to hold on to the ball. Yes, yes. And I know I missed something else earlier, Omega. I was, I was in the middle of something. Didn't want to lose my train of thought there. Uh, oh, that reminds me of when Paul was bitten by the snake and didn't die. The people wanted to worship him, thinking he was a deity come to earth. Yes. Well, they also thought he was first um, a murderer of some kind because it was justice by the gods that he was bitten by the snake, and it was just retribution by the gods. Then when he didn't die, he must be a god. Yes. Yes. Uh, Philippians 4, 8. Finally, yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's what I was trying to get to. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. See, I, I think that is the approach that we should have in regards to how we live. I need to dwell on things that are true, that are noble, that are right, that are pure, that are lovely, that are admirable, excellent, or praiseworthy, instead of think of the things that tempt me. Because all, if all I'm doing, and this is true of our kids, like, 
and, and I'm not saying this is easy, okay? And I'm not saying there's one way to do it. But when we, when we just treat our kids that they need to manage their behaviors and we don't teach them to manage their attitudes, they can go through all the motions and not, not care about people, not love one another. Uh, loving one another should be our motivation. Motiva like, I don't know if you ever did this as a parent, uh, those of you who are parents. I punish my children for attitudes. Like, like they would do something and it would really, I would be like, no, you have, you have a bad attitude. You have a bad disposition. You are treating someone else without love. Uh, it was their attitudes that they got punished for uh, more than it, I tried to correct their behavior. Now, that's not saying there weren't times I said, that's not acceptable behavior. Uh, you know better than that. Uh, you know, and we would do that. But I'm saying... I didn't just punish behavior alone. It was about why are you doing that? What caused you to do that? What is it within you that is, is acting that way? Again, you could still say there's a level of sin management there. Uh, but if you shift your focus off of the negative to a positive and you start to... Um, dwell in, the, in the, dwell, the the realm of love more than the realm of selfishness, uh, it does change things. Okay. Anyway, anyway, uh, all of these things would have been things that are tied to guilds and other things, and so some people avoid them altogether. Uh, some of the practices that happen with them you would want to avoid. Um, anyway. Well, that was a long side. Like, man, I thought Colossians, we could do it in a day. I'm not making it easy to get through it in a day. Um, these are only the shadows of the things to come, but the reality is Christ. Let no one who delights in false humility and the worship of angels. Oh, we did that. Pass judgment on you. I have no idea what to do with the angel passing judgment. Worship, uh, worshiping angels. No idea what to do with that. Just jazz hands on that. Don't know. Don't understand. Someday, maybe I'll have it better. Um, that person goes on at great lengths about what he's supposedly seen, but he is puffed up with empty notions by his fleshly mind. He has not held fast to the head from whom the whole body, supported and knit together through its ligaments and sinews, grows with a growth that is from God. So he is not participating in the body when he's doing those things. Uh, Donnie, uh, use that verse in a video. If we think of those things, we can find powerful lessons that present biblical teachings, even in evil things like anime. <laughs> evil things like anime and find new and powerful ways to share the gospel. Yes. Pop up to the head. Good morning, flat cap and chat. I pray everyone is having a blessed week. I am. I am. Oh, the bathroom repairman just left. I had to keep an eye on him. Oh, well, I'm glad. I'm glad you're getting some repairs done. I I hope that that is too, truly a blessing uh, to get some stuff taken care of. Um, if bum bum bum. If you have died with Christ in the elemental spirits of the world, why do you submit to them as though you live in the world? What do we have here? See the footnote on phrase elemental spirits in 2.8. Didn't look at that. They aren't done, but I'm waiting on the floor to dry. Okay. Okay. If you have died with Christ to the elements, so you no longer have to serve them. You've died to them. You are, they are dead to you. The elements of the world are dead. Why are you submitting to them? As though you lived in the world. So why are you doing the things that you used to and following after them? You don't need to. Do not handle. Do not taste. Do not touch. These are the things that are being said. Don't, don't touch it. Don't handle it. Don't taste it. These are all destined to perish with us. 
with, with use, founded as they are on human commands and teachings. Even though they have the appearance of wisdom with the self-imposed worship and humility achieved by an unsparing treatment of the body, a wisdom with no true value, they in reality uh, result in fleshly indulgence. Um, concessive subordinate clauses within the main clause. Okay. So, um, think about this. Think about this. If you have ever ha seen or, or know someone who was a goody two shoes, Christian goody two shoes, growing up in elementary school, in high school, goody two shoes. Uh, go off to college, no longer on mom and dad's, on, under mom and dad's imposed rules. They suddenly do whatever they want. So the supposed wisdom of don't do this, don't do that, don't touch, you know, the, what, I'm trying to remember what the phrase was. Um, we don't, we don't drink and we don't smoke. Uh, there was something like that, like don't drink, don't smoke and don't, do, go with girls that do, or I can't remember what it is. Can't remember. What it is. There was some phrase like that 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 was back in the day. Uh, or there's like, do we don't do dancing because dancing leads to other things. Uh, we don't go to movies because movies lead to things. We don't like all of the we don't because it leads to. Sounds like wisdom, but it's in, it's self imposed. And those people who brag about. I've never tasted alcohol in my life. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with never doing that. But when you use it as a brag, you are probably hiding or covering up for something else that you fleshly indulge in. There, there is an indulgence that, like, when you get a hold of it for the first time or you're going to go overboard. If you are not, if you do not learn moderation and you are only taught abstinence then when you have exposure to something you have indulgence moderate and i'm not just saying like this like that that moderation is the thing like there's some things you don't have moderation with you just don't you avoid them uh like murder there's no well let's have mo moderation on our, our amount of murder that we have no 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 no. what i'm saying is as far as those things of what i consume you know what? Moderation is a great thing. Don't overeat. Don't overdrink in any substance. Like, Halloween's a coming. Have moderation with your candy consumption. Have moderation with your sugar intake. Have moderation, like, it's just wisdom on that level. But total abstinence for always is not always wisdom for everything or for everyone. Okay, so therefore, in light of the fact that you are having people tell you, don't touch it, don't handle it, you can't taste it, don't know, oh, it just leads to bad things, stay away, stay away, stay away, and, and you're following along with them, and you're just imposing rules, oh wait, that was the old system, but you're going back to the rules system instead of loving people from your heart, therefore, in light of all of that, if, bum, 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 if you've been raised with Christ, keep seeking the things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Keep thinking about things above, not things on the earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you too will be revealed in glory with him. So... Put to death whatever is in your nature belongs to the earth. What are the things we're supposed to put to death? Cleansed by Christ. Love the flat cap. Thank you, friend. Thank you. Welcome in. Thanks for the follow. Or, I guess, thanks for the chat. <laughs> uh, so put to death whatever is by your nature on the earth. Okay, let's, let's just pause before we go through the list. Oh, there's the follow. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Uh, let me know how you found me. Let me know how you found me. And uh, are you a streamer, by the way? Uh, so you've been raised by Christ. 
So you've been dead in him. You are so this is a priority. If Christ is the priority in my life, then I am thinking of heavenly things. Uh, I am thinking about heavenly things in substitution for earthly things. So instead of thinking about the things I don't get now that I want to pursue and go chase after, I am thinking about Christ. I'm thinking about above. Found me through the Christian tag. Awesome. No, you're not a streamer for Christ yet. That's all right. Um, if you're not, uh, and but you do hang on Twitch, uh, being a mod for Christ whether in Christian streams or in other streams, or just being a presence in the community to love everybody is a fantastic presence of Christ. Love the name. Love the name, by the way. Um, so, how do we, how do we have a life that is after Christ, seated by Christ, at the right hand, all of those things. We put to death what is by nature belongs to the earth. You made this account in order to stream for Christ. Ah, you just haven't got there yet. Awesome. Um, well, if you want to find other Christian streamers, you can jump into my Discord. I have a channel about a bunch of Christian streamers, and most of those are groups. So I am uh, so ReachCon is uh rc up there is one of the groups um dc4c is another one of the groups safe streamers is another one of the groups i'm not a member of taco but i highly recommend taco um yeah hit hit me up in uh, the discord uh ask other people in the chat uh they can get you all kinds of info on others who are streamers and doing things and supporting one another in christ love that Oh, also there's Blessing Boat over there, which is a... So once you do uh, begin streaming and you want to help make it to affiliate, uh, Blessing Boat is a monthly raid train stream of content creators who are family-friendly Christian streamers trying to make affiliate. So there you go. Glad you're here. Okay, but what are the things we avoid? Sexual immorality, impurity shameful passions let me count these sexual immorality impurity shameful passions evil desires greed which is idolatry oh oh there's five things i got that right one two three four five am i right yeah one two three four five sorry the shameful passions is on two sides my brain is trying to count it as more uh greed which is idolatry five things torah okay so we've got a representative idea there these are the negative uh, teachings, the negative worldly uh, inspired doctrine of how you should live. You should have sexual immorality, impurity, shameful passions, evil desires, and greed. Greed is idolatry? Greed is idolatry? Yes, it's worshiping something else instead of the creator it is exploiting of other people all of these things all of these things could be summarized as not loving your neighbor as yourself and not loving god that that that's a list there uh you'll discuss discord or you'll join discord and discuss later as right now i'm building a table i need to get back to work but you mean a real physical table what, what kind of table are you building? Are you, uh, do you do, uh, I also have, uh, by the way, a channel, look what I made. So if you are an actual craftsman, post the pics when you're done. Post the pics. Would love that. Okay. Also, by the way, notice, notice that whenever things are listed here, uh, sexual immorality is um it's a console table okay you're at work right now well even if you do it for a living i mean it doesn't have to be uh you know just an artisan yourself but you're still doing some uh assembly some crafting corona one drawer console table with white for more clarification Ooh, i i do love uh, a drawer on my tables i do I spent extra on my little in tables to have drawers in them. Um, okay. 
Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming on the sons of disobedience. You also lived your lives in this way at one time when you used to live among them. But now put off all such things as anger, rage, malice, slander, abusive language from your mouth. Five again, but maybe there's more because it's he's continuing. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with its practices and have been clothed with a new man that is being re renewed in knowledge according to the image of the one who created it. Okay, so you put off things like anger, rage, malice, slander, abusive language, and do not lie to one another. Okay, so that's six. That would be six. I, I, I think we do count that. Um, so anger, rage, malice, slander, abusive language. So anger would be, um, could lead to rage. I mean, angry can be upset at people, uh, bitterness, uh, rage, uh, you know, is our, our physical actions. Malice would, would be, uh, our treatment. Slander, um, saying things that are not true about someone. Abusive language from your mouth. I mean, berating somebody, tearing them down, and then lying. This would be gaining advantage over someone. Look at all these things that we can do. Um, and six being the number of man. So that would be uh, the worldly manly practices. So we could look at we could look at the list above of being the worldly way or the spirits of the darkness way, the sexual immorality, impurity, shameful passions, evil desires, and greed. And we could look at the, but I don't think we have to make a distinction. Uh, I'm just pointing them out. Um, but we're clothed with a new man and renewed with the knowledge. Okay. Of we are created in the image of the one who created us. Here there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and in all. Canine, welcome in, my friend. Welcome in. Um, so stop making divisions. You're making divisions between those who were Greek and those who were Jew. And he goes even further. It's not circumcised and uncircumcised. It's not even civilized. That's what the barbarian would be, is uncivilized. Anyone who is not Roman would be a barbarian. Scythian, a very special breed of those that we derade and beguile. And slave or free. Uh, status, social status and standing. No, in Christ, there is all. And all are in Christ. Therefore, in light of the fact that we all have singular standing in Christ and that we should put away the worldly things we used to do, as the elect of God, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with a heart of mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. Seven. The total package, the totality, seven, the completed way that you should live. Let's just review that again before we go further. Clothing yourself. Okay, this is what you put on. This is, this is the outward expression of what is coming from within. This is the things that people see. You have a heart. Heart. You clothe yourself with a heart. I love that image. Your heart is... This is what comes out of the heart. You are clothed with it. It's what people see. You, they see mercy. They see kindness. They see humility. They see gentleness. They see patience. They see you bearing with one another. They see you forgiving one another. Isn't that beautiful? Let me see what this has for mercy here in the footnote. Uh, genitive construct is... Hadiades, that is, it would be compassion or tenderheartedness. Okay. I'm fine with mercy. Okay. If, bum, 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 if someone happens to have a complaint against anyone else, just as the Lord has forgiven you, you also forgive others. How do you live out 
all of these things. You forgive others. Is there an exception clause? Let's see. Can we have an exception clause to the forgive others? And all these virtues add love. So there were seven. Oh, oh, so this reminds me of there are seven things the Lord hates, yet eight. There are six things the Lord hates, yet seven. There are things. You know, this is an Old Testament proverbial way of stating it. You say a number, and then you add one more. And to all of these virtues, add love, which is the perfect bond. Let the peace of Christ be in control of your heart. Oh, that's a beautiful image. Peace of Christ control your heart. Not your mind, not your revenge, not your I was, I was treated poorly and I have the right to. No, 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 friends. We need to stop thinking of our rights and we need to think of Christ's love towards others. For you were in fact called as one body in this peace and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly teaching and exhorting one another with all wisdom, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, all with grace in your hearts to God. So we have all wisdom. What does wisdom look like? I think that's what we have. With all wisdom, wisdom is psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Wisdom comes out in our beautiful speech. Now, I don't know that this has to literally be singing, okay? But the idea of psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs is it's for edification. Peace which surpasses understanding. Woofler in the house. If you're not following Woofler, what are you doing with your life? What are you doing with your life? Woofler, my man, welcome in. Uh, I lost my place, Woofler. Look what you did to me. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and exhorting one another in all wisdom. So it is the dwelling of Christ in you richly that does the teaching and exhorting. The dwelling of Christ in you does it. It does not have to be your words of correction. No, it is the wisdom that flows out of you in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with all grace in your hearts to God. You are doing this to God. You're building up the body. You're, uh. And whatever you do in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So all of this is done out of love, out of grace in your hearts, all done to God, not done to put someone else down, not done to put someone else in their place, not done to elevate my own status, not done to make me look good, not done to get me praise. Woo! Uh, little buddies, morning, good morning, friends. So great to be here. Uh, I uh, love starting my day in the Word with you. Thank you, friend. How is uh, my niece? Yes, I have adopted your little cherub. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so Paul Paul gives this in other places, and we, we talked about this more when we looked at Ephesians, but it's worth looking at again. So I'm going to go look up the word here. Um, so Colossians 3. She's the cutest little potato girl, and she needs all the aunties. <laughs> oh, where are we at? 3 what? 3 what? 3.18. Okay, upotasso, upotasso. Strong's G, 5293, <laughs> upotasso, upotasso. Uh, a cherub is a shortened form for a cherubim, and a cherubim in scripture is an angel, 
is a uh, so the uh, medieval view of uh, cherubs would be like Cupid, little angels that fly around. So it's just another way of saying uh, an angel is to say a cherub or a cherubim. Although usually if you say cherubim, you're thinking a throne guardian. So. Okay, upo tasso. To arrange under, to subordinate, or to subject, uh, to, su yeah. Okay, subject to me and to subjugate have a different meaning in English uh, from what it used to, uh, and we have made it that, but to submit to one's control. Here is, here's what it should be in my mind. Yield, yield is, I think, a better translation because submit has a connotation of subjugation, uh, and it is not the word for subjugation. The word is the word... Uh, used of a Roman senator who yields to another Roman senator of equal equal status. We also have this is uh, supposed to be used towards one another. Okay, cockroach, thank you for the sub. Ten months now. Appreciate it, friend. Uh, so wives, yield to your husbands as it is fitting to the Lord. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Thank you. Uh, so it is in relation, the same way you would... Yield to the Lord, you'll yield to your husband. Uh, we talked about this too, that the, the shocking idea is that it's your husband that you yield to instead of your father. That's the shocking idea. It's who you yield to, but also a status of equals is used with that word usage. All right, we got an ad break coming in. I can't snooze it. We're going to fish. And Wywis is looking good. Let's let's go check out Wywis. Wywis is the albino plecostomist there, giving us a full fan view there today. And uh, the baby koi are saying, "Isn't it feeding time? Isn't it feeding time? Come on, let's go." Watch the fish, they swim along To the rhythm of his song Flat cat pastor shows the way Stream it live, come what may With his cam, he showed it all Ah, uh, yes, yes, uh, Cleansed by Christ. Those, those are my fish. Those are the, uh, the baby koi. And uh, let me show you real quick. This is uh, mom and dad's out in the pond. Uh, that is mom and dad hanging out in the pond with some other brothers and sisters that were born last year. So the smaller ones are a year old and the bigger ones are uh, at least three, four years old. And uh, they also must have just had feeding time as well. There we go. So you can see the sun over here, finally peeking above the trees there. Whoa, it just all of a sudden did a slippery slide. And there's the guppies. Why, why did they suddenly stop? That's weird. Unless my internet's having problems. Rot row raggy. Life and pond so serene. Nature's beauty on the screen. Oh, by the way, so the one tank is right here uh, with the cam on it. The guppies are over here with the tank on it. There is another one back here. A uh, tank you can see right there. And then there's another tank over here uh, as well. So I have I have uh, several, several tanks. Do I allow fishing in that pond? No, it is only koi. It is only koi in their canine, and uh, it, they they would not put up much of a fight. So it's it's not even worth the time. Okay, um, I don't know how long chapter four is. I do have about a half an hour that we can go. Uh, so it depends on how long we spend on this conversation here. 
if we make it to four. I would love to finish Colossians today. I think that'd be a good accomplishment, but I'm not going to force it. I do have a meeting at 1030, not 10. Uh, so that's that's where we are. Yeah, and to think all these ponds and tanks were started because of a few goldfish. Yes, actually, the uh, it was a different aquarium than that one over there. That's a 15-gallon. I had a 10-gallon that where the goldfish started. And then I got the koi pond and put them in the uh, koi and got them in that aquarium. And then I got the guppies to replace the koi when the koi went outside. And then I've got koi back inside in more tanks. I mean, it's a never-ending story. Okay, um, so we have, back to our text, wives submit to your husbands. I really think yield is the right word because yielding is a voluntary thing that I choose to do. It is not a mandated thing that I'm forced to do, okay? We take the idea of subjugation, and I, I, I think that is blatantly false. That is not what this is saying. It is not saying... In your household, when you vote on things, you and your spouse vote on things. And if you disagree, and it is a vote that's 50-50, the husband wins. That's how I hear people teach this. And it's, that is not it. It's not, oh, the wife has to give up her, her thoughts, uh, her wishes for her husband's. No. It is a voluntary giving up of things that you could claim to have, that you, so if, for instance, um, you don't like seafood, but your spouse likes seafood, you give up going to a restaurant that might be a steak restaurant to go to a seafood restaurant to have a steak at the seafood restaurant because they'll have one for you anyway. But your spouse then, whom you love, can have seafood that they're wanting. That's what this yielding is about. It is giving up. Now, I know that's not a right to have or anything, but it is giving up of status and standing. The other thing is that's interesting is, is it's who it's to. It is to the husband. Wives in Roman society didn't need to do this. They, they could have daddy get a divorce. They could go to dad when there was a problem, okay? Um, the, the idea is they're giving up. And going to husband is the radical idea, not husbands ruling over. It doesn't say husbands rule over. What does it say for husbands? Husbands, love your wives and do not be embittered against them. Okay, you, you, let me just make sure which love it is. I'm pretty sure it's agape, but let's make sure. Yes, agap agapao, agapao your wives, and do not be, do not bitter against them. Okay, in Jewish culture, there was arguments over who could get a divorce and for what reasons, and the rabbis debated you could even get a divorce for, uh, she burned the roast last night, kind of an idea, Okay. Um, and you could get bitter against them. Don't treat them bitterly. Love them. Sorry, I thought I just saw something go by. It might have been a squirrel. Uh, love them. What does agape love look like? It looks like self-sacrificing love. So if I am loving my wife, I'm not saying I get the deciding vote. That's not loving. If every time we have a disagreement, like, hey, we're going to go on vacation, um, do you want to go to uh, Florida or do you want to go or yeah, do you want to go to Disney World or do you want to go to Kentucky? I don't want to go to Disney World, but if my wife wants to go there and she wants to bring the kids there, out of love for my wife, I will tolerate walking around Disney World. I love her. I want the best for her. I want things for her and therefore I don't hold bitterness, I hold love. So this is reciprocal in relationship. One is giving up of things, the other is giving up, self-sacrificing. So one is yielding to, the other is self-sacrificing. Yes, a literal squirrel, literal squirrel. 
Um, children, obey your parents in everything, for this is pleasing to the Lord. Okay, we take this one out of context. Let me go see what children, what word is used here for children. There are several different words the same way that we have of infant, toddler, teen, adolescent. Strong's G, 5043. Technon. Technon. Offspring. Offspring. Uh, so. Uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba 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 -ba. It's got lots of uses. So it is not. This is not. The word that. Um, we would just think of as a toddler. We have translated this. Children, obey your parents and everything, for this is pleasing to the Lord. Kids, start doing right stuff. Start obeying what I say. You have to listen to me. That's not what this is. This is an adult child. Okay? This passage is to those of the household of faith and how you treat your parents as you are adults. Okay? You listen to your parents and do what is right by them and for them because it's pleasing to God. That's not a common thing. No, I want my parents to pass away as soon as possible so I can inherit their status and their stuff. Okay, no. No, no, no. I'm going to be obedient to my parents in everything. I'm going to, let me just look at the word obey there actually. Let's look at that too. Upo Strong's G fifty-two nineteen. Upako. Upakuo. 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 Yeah, to listen, to hearken to. To submit. Oh, oh, yeah. There we go. Even even there we go. Submitting to. Fathers, do not provoke your children so they will not become disheartened. Okay, so these are all household codes here, by the way, too, which I can't go into depth, really, with a good analogy of the household codes. But one of the reasons why Paul does include household codes is because of the manner of which Christianity felt like it was a threat to Roman society because you did not worship the gods. You did not do worship of emperors. You did not have a an idol that symbolized your God. There's all kinds of things that are threatening, and household codes feel threatened as well. So in a couple of occasions, Paul lists out what would be concurrent household codes of how to live them out. Uh, fathers, do not provoke your children so they will not become disheartened. So fathers, don't put undue burdens on your children. This is not just youngsters. This, again, could be your adult children. Uh, slaves, obey your earthly masters in every respect, not only when they are watching, like those who uh, are strictly people pleasers, but with a sincere heart fearing the Lord. Now, is the next phrase still to the slaves, or is this to everyone? Whatever you do, work at it with enthusiasm, as to the Lord and not to people, because you know that you will receive your inheritance from the Lord as your reward. Serve the Lord Christ, for the one who does work with, well, oh, sorry, who does wrong will be repaid for his wrong, and there are no exceptions. I think, now maybe it says, let me just see what the footnote says. The present progressive are doing are used in translation to bring out the idea that Paul is probably referring to what they already do for work. Okay, so I think this could still be an expansion of slaves and what you are doing. Not simply a generic who is it, but the Greek would give a better uh, understanding there, and I don't know it well enough to get con connection. Is this the same as the slaves? It, it also, even if it is connected with the slaves, it may also be, uh, you know, singular masculine and aligned with other things in the text too. 
But I do think fearing the Lord and whatever you do is still good for all of us. But when you have no choice in what you are doing, do everything as if it's to God. Do everything as if it's to God. All right, so this is household codes. And there's a couple places that talk about household codes. And here's a bad break because, oh, wait, Masters is in the next section. Masters, treat your slaves with justice and fairness because you know that you also have a master in heaven. So, masters treat slaves with justice and fairness. Why does it say that instead of free all your slaves? There are rules and regulations of when and how you can free slaves. Um, one of the times you could is when you inherited them. So when they would be passed down to you from your father's passing, you could then free slaves at that time. There were ways in which slaves could pay for and earn their uh, freedom, but you could not necessarily just free slaves on a whim. Uh, that's not a standard uh, in all places in all times. So does the Bible talk about owning people? Yes, it does in the Old Testament. Yes, it does in the New Testament. Um, but there's also the book of Philemon that talks about you should free your slave because they're a brother and sister in Christ. So he's talking to those in the church in Colossae who are brothers and sisters in Christ who are slaves. And masters who are owners of slaves, he doesn't take the occasion here to encourage them to free slaves. Uh, he's writing household codes on treatment. So this isn't a treaty on things. This is an accommodation on the culture in which people are living, which I think also the Old Testament uh, rules are an accommodation to the culture in which they are in. Not a here is a hard, fast rule you should have slaves, or that slavery is a, uh, a beneficial thing or a permissible thing. I don't think that at all. It's saying in the circumstances in which you live, your if you have them still hold to a higher standard than the society in which you live in. Now, what's interesting here, be devoted in prayer. Is this the masters that are supposed to be devoted in prayer? Is this everyone? Be devoted to prayer, keeping alert in it with thanksgiving. At the same time, pray for us too. Okay, so this seems like it's everyone. Pray for us too, that God may open the door for the message so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ for which I am in chains. So Paul is in chains. He wants to proclaim the mystery of Christ. We were talking all about the mystery earlier, about the height, depth, and breadth of the mystery of Christ, of what he did on the cross for us, the gospel which was preached to us, the gospel which, which we received, and that we should stick with it, and we need to hold firm to it to the end, and how we should treat and love one another. Pray that I may make it known as I should. This seems so weird. We've been taught that Paul is this whole big, bold preacher. Um, the inner clause is subordinate to the imperative. The reference to the idea that Paul must make it known indicated that the clause is probably best viewed as the purpose and not content. Uh, the first expression through infinitive, the term pray at the beginning of the sentence is intended to be picked up in the imperative. Okay. You're so excited to get into streaming for Christ? That's awesome. Does Well, you know what? You know what? Cleansed by Christ. Um, Twitch um, does permit 15-year-olds uh, to stream. Um, I, don't, I don't personally know a lot of teenagers who are streamers, uh, but I do know Magellan. Um, is a 14 or 15 year old Christian streamer. Um, he was just on Blessing Boat on last Saturday, and his mom, Mama Brick Builds, uh, is also a Christian streamer. You've been streaming for the past uh, five years uh, on other accounts. Yeah. Um, what I would say is. Uh, have good mods around you that are strong in the faith that can help when uh, conversations come up. 
uh, when difficulties arise. Yeah. Uh, I was also thinking I could help people learn about Gen Z's view of Christianity since I'm young. I know a lot of friends who can help. That is awesome because I don't have a lot of connections, natural connections with Gen Z. Uh, I don't have grandkids yet. Um, I'm not currently serving in a, a church, uh, in a physical church. And the last few I had didn't have any Gen Z in the church. Gamers for Christ has a lot of family members that stream together. Yes. Uh, I do have a link to them also in my Discord in the uh, Christian Streamer channel, Gamers for Christ group. Okay. So pray for me as I am in change. Pray that I may make... So anyway, I was saying, Paul needs prayers to make the gospel known as he should. I think this is a level of boldness and a level of clarity. It's, it's a both. And then he turns back, conduct yourself with wisdom towards outsiders Make the most of the opportunity. The, the, okay, you want to you have a passage for your stream. Here it is. Conduct yourself with wisdom towards outsiders. Make the most of the opportunities. Let your speech... Graciousness... Just seasoned with it, okay? Just an amount that is going to add flavor, going to add someone's desire to have more of it so that you know how to answer everyone you should, okay? Graciousness, like admit when you don't know. Like, I don't know, I don't understand. Um, yeah, do not be a Debbie Downer. Exactly, exactly, Electropod. And, and don't be... Um, an overbearing person that's uh, a rule Nazi on things. Uh, at Cleanse by Christ, pray before you stream and dedicate your uh, stream to God, and God will bring viewers and stream that you can reach. Uh, that's a great suggestion. I'm the most positive man I've ever met. <laughs> Not to be, like, prideful. Okay. Let's see if we can finish this. I got, a, I got, ooh, this is going to be a, this is going to be a slog here. Let me try to finish this. I got, I got like 10-ish minutes to finish. Uh, Tychicus, a dear brother, faithful minister, and fellow slave in the Lord, will tell you all the news about me. So this must be the one who's bringing the letter. I sent him to you with the very purpose that you may know how we are doing and that he may encourage your hearts. I sent with him Onesimus, the faithful dear brother, who is one of you. They will tell you about everything here. Oh, so Onesimus, which which I'm not going to look up. You'll have to wait till we get to Philemon. Uh, Onesimus, actually, it means, um, oh, I'm not going to tell you. Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner. Why is it? Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, send you greetings, as does Mark, the cousin of Barnabas, about whom you received instructions. If, bum, 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 he comes to you, welcome him. Okay, so I'm not sure if, if it's Mark that you're to welcome as a fellow prisoner, Aristarchus, um, or Mark, whatever, you're supposed to greet them, and Jesus who is called Justice, also sends his greeting. In terms of Jewish converts, these are the only fellow workers for the kingdom of God, and they have been a comfort to me. Epiphras, we had him at the beginning, who is one of you and a slave of Christ, greets you. He is always struggling in prayer on your behalf so that you may stand mature and fully assured in all the will of God. So look at all the greetings, all the people. Um, you have to go. Yeah, I noticed a couple that looked like glitching there. I'm going to guess it's my ISP. I'm going to guess my ISP is having problems. Um. 
okay. For I can testify that he has worked hard for you and for those in Laodicea and Herapolis. Our dear friend Luke the physician and Demas greet you. Give my greetings to the brothers and sisters who are in Laodicea and to Nympha and the church that meets in her house. Okay, this would definitely be one we should go look up. We'll go back in a second and look up names. And after you have read this letter, have it read in the church of Laodicea. In turn, read the letter from Laodicea as well. And tell Archippus, see to it that you complete the ministry you received in the Lord. I, Paul, write this greeting by my own hand. Remember my chains. Grace be to you. Yes, read definitions after. Yes. Well, it was just more names, more names that I want to look up. Okay. So we have an end here, um, and this is where we get the, the idea of the letter is for you and there's a letter for someone else. Exchange letters. Exchange letters. What I wrote to them is valuable. Also, this is why. This is why the people get named here. He is praising different people in the church for the work they are doing. This is their letter of recommendation when they go other places. Hey, you're the one Paul mentioned in the letter here. Now, I, having been mentioned by Paul in the letter that you know about, can endorse and support someone else. So we get validation of one another, building up of the body, encouraging of one another as we have these letters being distributed and carried back and forth. Okay, let's do some quick word search lookup. Um, there were a whole... What's going on? Thank you. I'm like, that is that should not take a long time to load this page. Okay. My bit rate still looks fine, but uh ba -ba -da -ba 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 -bum. So we have Tyacus, which means he is the inventor of ties. And we have Onesimus, one of my favorite, one of my favorite. By the way, if you know Onesimus Prime, um, this is who he is named after. This is who he is named after. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. I'm going to skip those. Let's look up Epiphras. I don't remember if we did that at the beginning. And Nymphus, Nymphus. Um, I think that's just Nymph and Archippus. I know I skipped a couple of names, but they're more uh, ordinary names, so that's why I'm skipping them. Uh, Tychios? Strong's G, 5190. Tuchikas. 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 Faithful, faithful. So perhaps, perhaps this is a name like Barnabas. This is a man who is faithful. Therefore, he is called faithful. He becomes the name that he is. Strong's G, 3682, Anesimus. 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 Uh, useful. Useful. So in the letter to Philemon, he says, He who was formerly useless to you has become useful to me. He is useful. He is Onesimus. I love that name change. Um, oh, did I not click the epiphras? Lovely. Strong's G, 1889. Epiphras. 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 Oh, I just, I clicked the verse. I didn't click the name, apparently. Nympha. Nymphas. Strong's G, 3564. Numfa, Numfa, Friars lexicon, Numfas, Numfas. Okay, this says bridegroom and it's feminine. Uh, 
Yeah, I'm thinking I need a different, like this is used once in scripture. Um, I need a different lexicon to help me with this name. This one's, this one doesn't seem to have it. A, a, oh, did I not do Aristicus? Did I do Aristicus? I must, oh, there it is. Archippus. I missed Aristocris. Archippus. Matters. Charles Master G, of the Horse. Archippus. 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 Master of the Horse. Oh, I did skip Aristocris. The best Strong ruler. G seven zero eight. The Aristarchus. best ruler greets you. The best. Yeah, Wilbur. Okay, I don't think I missed anything when I was looking up all the words there. Okay, I got to get to bed. Have a great rest of the stream. Thank you, Donnie. If you're not following Donnie, you need to be following Donnie, Don and, and go check out his um um YouTube shorts. Uh that he's doing on anime. Uh, I think he's got some really good stuff that he's putting out. Really good stuff. Okay. Let's see where we are. We made it. We made it through Colossians. I was doubting our ability to do that today. We made it through Colossians. We'll be back in Jeremiah on Thursday. No stream on Friday. Sorry about that. I got a conference on Friday. So we'll be back on Thursday. Thursday, and um, my my koi pond my koi pond may be up uh, on Thursday. Seen one last night and was great. Have a great rest. Yes. Um. Up 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 up. That's weird. So if you want to check out my other stream, that will be up. One Dapper Koi Pond. I also have an underwater cam as well, which is super fun. All right. So let's find someone to raid today. And then I got to get ready for my training of people. Um, I think we, well, we, I'm trying to look at who we, who we did not hit in the last week. And, um, I know that we hit her last week. So I, I like spreading it around, but I do see that she is up. Oh, okay. He just started. I don't see him very often. I'm just trying to debate between a couple of people here. Oh, and he's just starting. Okay. And we hit him yesterday. You know what? I want to go there. I want to go there. Let's go do some music. Let's go do some music. I have not hit him in a while um so we'll go do music and let me let me send you off with a blessing may god seeking comfort find you may his loving arms bind you may his might protect you may his wisdom direct you may the joyous love of jesus christ be with you and all those you know both now 
and forevermore. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. I appreciate it so much. I love hanging out with you. I love being in God's word. I love your excitement and enthusiasm uh, to be in God's word, your love for one another, uh, all of the bits, tips, subs, the follows, uh, the raid. What a great day. Pages, chronicles, gospels, prophets, sages, Leviticus, laws to Paul's fine phrases, turning them corners, no spiritual mazes, Genesis to Revelation, self divine, flip them scripts, endless grace you'll find, psalm singing sweet, unbroken lines, hitting that rhythm, wordplay refined. Anybody in here blessed? I'm blessed. Anybody in here blessed? I'm blessed. Bible in one year, we don't rest. Anybody in here blessed? I'm blessed. Wake up early, the dawn's light shimmers. Spiritual breakfast, soul food dinners. Isaiah's vision, Ezekiel's figures. Walk through the fire, no one limbers. Kings and judges, prophets profound. Plow in the word, no mythical ground. Verse after verse, wisdom's bound. Heavenly soundtrack, souls urban sound. Anybody in here blessed? I'm blessed. Anybody in here blessed? I'm blessed. Bible in one year, we don't rest. Anybody in here blessed? I'm blessed. No shortcuts, all divine routes. Listen to the whisper.